Hello, World Wide Web. My name is, should I give my real name? My name is Marsha, and I just thought there are so many teachers out there doing blogs. Why not join? You might find me interesting. You might find me not. That's okay. But I thought I'm going to put my little piece out there. So what has inspired me to make this video today is the fact that I am job hunting. I have been teaching adult ESL for quite a few years now, but I started my teaching career off teaching elementary school, and I think I'm ready to go back but I wanna combine my elementary school teaching and my ESL teaching together. So I wanna go back and teach elementary ELLs. That's what I want, that's what I'm focusing on. I could go back and just teach regular elementary school and since a lot of schools are now requiring you to have like an endorsement for sheltered English immersion anyway, I'm sure that I would have lots of English language learners in my class, but I want to be an ELL teacher for the school building. That's what I want to do. I might get there and do it and say, you know what, I'd rather be in my own classroom, but this is going to how I want to start it off right now, and then we'll see where my career goes from there. Anyhow, today I had my first job interview, and it is March, the very beginning of March. So let's see how long it takes for me to get a job. I have been teaching since 2004 when I got my teaching degree. So I've been in the game for a while, but you never know. Right now I'm in Toronto, Ontario. Am I giving you too much information about myself? I'm in Toronto right now. And as soon as I got here, I was like, okay, I could teach here. Let me get into the Ontario College Teachers um, they call it the Ontario College of Teachers. Let me get into that college and try to find a job here. Turns out, I, I got this Ontario College of Teachers magazine, and they said, oh, there are 37,000 teachers that are certified to teach in this um, province that are without jobs. So what people are doing here is they're just, they call it supply teaching. In American, we say substitute teaching. Here they call it supply teaching. You get on the supply teachers list, and you substitute teach here, and you substitute teach there, and you just wait for that phone call. So I don't even know how these people live their life because you just are going about your day or every day you get ready for the next day to receive a phone call or not. So you just are like what, awake at six o'clock in the morning waiting for your phone to ring. And they might say, okay, come down to this school across the city. Or today there's nothing, your phone doesn't ring. So I couldn't live like that, and I just decided to forget that and just to get back into teaching adult ESL, which I love. It's been great, um, but I think I'm ready to go back to teach ele teaching elementary school. So I can't do it here, so I have to go back to the States, Massachusetts. That's all you're going to know about me. I'm from Massachusetts. Okay. So I went on schoolspring.com and I put in what I wanted the search agent to, to find for me. And they've got all these ESL teaching jobs for elementary because I'm, I'm certified to teach grades pre-K through six. So I'm applying for any ELL pre-K through six job that I find. There have been a few, but I started in February, and so there's just been a sprinkle here, a sprinkle there. I expect that as the months go on that there will be lots more jobs coming up. But there was one school, um, a charter school, that this, they just said they're, they're hiring ELL teachers. They just put ELL teachers anticipated openings like, like they're just hiring a bunch. So I thought, okay, let me try it out. This is a place that I have applied before, and I don't think I got an interview last time. I got one this time. But the way they do it is they don't call you into the school to meet with them one-on-one -on -one right away. It's a video interview. So that, I already have anxiety problems and this took my anxiety level way up high because I can just picture them taking my video and rewinding, hear what she said there, hear how she messed up here. I don't know, my brain went crazy. 
So they gave me four days to make the video and I, today's day three, I did the video just now. So it took me a couple of days, two full days to just kind of work my way into it. Came up with these, um, here's, okay, here's step one. I come up with little cards, little note cards. I put down the um, possible questions that they could ask. So what could I contribute to the school? What's an outstanding lesson that you've taught? And tell us about it. What are your teaching strengths? Uh, can you see that one? Teaching strengths. So what I did is I would just write down notes on the back. And not just notes of um, like one word notes. I needed some expressions, some sentence chunks. So that... I wouldn't spend a lot of time looking for my words. They didn't give me the, the questions ahead of time, but I thought, okay, what are some of the common common questions that they could ask? And I came up with like, how many cards do I have here? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about seven commonly asked questions so that I could just know, be comfortable with speaking my answers in full sentences without stopping to be like, uh, uh, what's the word? What would be the right way to say this? I thought of the right ways to say things um, ahead of time, and I wrote down actual sentence, word chunks, not full sentences, but word chunks that I could use that would express the ideas that I, I had in mind. And I practiced them in the mirror, and I practiced them with my husband, and he would be like, mm, that doesn't sound good, but we try to find a better word. So that was really helpful. And then I just was like, you know what? If I wait any longer, I'm just going to throw up from the anxiety. I'm just going to make this video. And then it turned out that next door that my neighbors moved out. And so the landlords decided today's the day that they should redo the whole apartment. So now there's a lot of banging and knocking. And I was like, how am I going to find a quiet place to record my video? But they were very kind. I went and knocked on the door and I spoke to the construction workers and they said, okay, it's a 15 minute video. We can give you 20 minutes of quiet so that you can do your interview. So I'm really grateful for that. Um, I just finished the video. As I said, of course, the questions that I prepared, most of them were not asked. They asked me six questions. They gave me two minutes for each question. Some of the stuff that I prepared did have me um, prepared for some of the questions that they asked. They didn't ask them in the way that I predicted, but I think it was still a good exercise that I, I did this. There were some questions that they asked that I should have been more prepared for. Like, I prepared a classroom management card, but I was much more general about what it means and why it's important and what you should consider in classroom management, but I didn't even prepare my um an example of what i've used for classroom management in the past but i did have one ready and i think that i answered that one pretty confidently they asked me questions about how i would deal with the student that was not in uniform the school uses uniforms and they said if a student comes in not in uniform how would you address the student they asked me questions about, um, I can't even remember. See, this is how anxiety gets me. They asked me six simple questions, and it was about 10 minutes ago, and I still can't remember. But I think that the most of the questions that they asked me are things that you, you could expect. Now, there are probably hundreds of questions that you could expect in an interview, but do your best to come up with maybe, I would say come up with 10 questions that you would expect to be in an interview and find ways that they could, different ways that they could ask those 10 questions. So if you come up with three different ways for each question, you'll have 30, 30 answers prepared so that even if they find another way that you didn't predict for asking a question, you can still feel confident that you've at least thought about these things. And they're going to challenge you, so don't be easy on yourself in your preparation. Um, I think that's all I have to say for now. So as I said, it's the beginning of March 2017. 
I've had one interview and I've sent out maybe five to ten applications depending on how you count it because one school would have a f like four or one district would have four of the same kind of position available another district would have one so I applied for maybe to maybe four or five districts so far and I'm hoping that more districts will come up with ELL openings in the state of Massachusetts I'm kind of opening to teaching almost anywhere in Massachusetts Almost. I'm not I'm staying away from the very far corners, but almost anywhere. So we'll see. Tune in next time. I don't have a name for my blog yet, but I'll come up with one. Bye.